In today's Force.com cast episode, we're going to be talking about MVC on the Salesforce platform. So Salesforce implements the MVC or Model View Controller pattern for helping to separate concerns when displaying data from a database on a web page. Unlike many other popular MVC frameworks such as Rails, or the Play Framework or ASP.NET MVC, Salesforce's MVC implementation has some slight differences that you should be aware of when working with the platform to help you make the best choices. So we can start by providing an overview of the MVC pattern. You can see here we have our three standard components, the model, the controller, and the view. And the model kind of represents our data that we want to encapsulate. So it's some real world object or some sort of item that we want to have to use in the system. And it's more often than not a database table that we're putting out into some sort of code format. Our model is then displayed by the view, which puts it onto a page for us to read in a nicer format. And the view also accepts user input and passes that to the controller. The controller looks after our application logic and handles this user input to then update the model correctly. And it then tells the view how it needs to be updated. The key here is that we've separated the presentation or view from the model and the controller from the view. Traditionally, this is more important because of the need to be able to specify and change databases. So traditionally, I'd have a system where I might want to use either an Oracle database or a SQL Server database or a MySQL database or even a MongoDB database. And I want to be able to interchange them should the technology give me a reason to do so. Usually this is done with an ORM or object relational mapping system and this along with our model have the responsibility for mapping from code to our database and vice versa. Many of the most popular MVC frameworks such as Rails or Play include utility methods on the model to retrieve data such as the find by ID method which we've shown here um, on the tweet model so we're finding the tweet with ID 123 and similarly we have Play here with a Mongo database, because um, it's a particular plugin module that we're using here, that allows us to retrieve a list of cars by the name Toyota. So it's important now to ask how Salesforce deals with models. Salesforce provides a built-in ORM for models in the S object classes. The account object is in fact a model for the account data model, which is stored on Salesforce's servers. We could also have contact data model, which again, this S object instance is in fact a model of our contact data stored on the Salesforce servers. And similarly, if we were to create an invoice custom object, that again is a model using the S object ORM system from our database servers. This is extremely coupled, but it's okay because 99.99% .99 of the use cases on Salesforce will have Salesforce as the database. So the model part of the MVC framework in Salesforce is the S object class and the model instance is our S object instance. So what we're going to do is take a step backward now and focus on our views for a moment. Salesforce provides two ways of creating a view for a particular model, the standard page layout and also visual force pages. If we just consider standard page layouts for a second, we can see now that in our MVC pattern, we have the S object as our model the standard page layout is our view, but what's our controller? So Salesforce provides a great pair of utility classes, the standard controller and the standard set controller. These are controllers that Salesforce has written for dealing with one or multiple records for display. So with this knowledge now, we can go back to our MVC pattern for standard pages and see that we've updated it as follows and that we have our S object model our standard controller or standard set controller for dealing with either a single record or a set of records and also our standard page layout. One of the nice things that Salesforce does is also allows you to use the standard controllers with Visual Force pages without any Apex code. So we can also add Visual Force pages down here as another view option. So this MVC structure is great. However, if you want your page to have additional actions or you want to override one of the existing actions such as edit, view, save or delete, then you can write a custom Apex controller extension. So controller extensions can extend both the standard controller and the standard set controller, as well as custom controllers, which we'll discuss a bit further down in a minute. When extending a standard Salesforce controller or standard set controller, you should include a constructor to take in the standard controller type so you can access its methods and data, 
including the record or records for handling. This allows you to write simple additional functionality for your page whilst utilizing the predefined controller construct methods from Salesforce. So we mentioned that a custom controller can also be extended. So a custom controller is a controller that's written completely in Apex and operates in system mode. This means that user permissions and field level security are not enforced. It is worth noting, however, that if we use a controller extension that has a standard controller that it's extending, then all the methods that are on the standard controller will run in user mode, and so field level security and user permissions will be enforced. However, both custom controllers and custom controller extensions run in system mode, and so we can only enforce org by defaults, role hierarchy, and sharing by using the with sharing keywords. So let us go back now and review our MVC pattern again, and we can see we have MVC, uh, our MVC pattern has S objects as models, standard controllers, custom controllers, and controller extensions for our control options, and also standard or visual force pages for our views. There's a final piece we can add on the models front, however, which is to include wrapper classes. So wrapper classes are effectively Apex models that are written completely in Apex for when we want to extend or use some extra functionality which is unavailable on NS object. So some examples for this include displaying formula values in unsaved records, because formulas are only calculated when reading from the database, um, adding further input validation, or displaying data from multiple records together. So uh, some instances you might have an image that's attached as an attachment on a record that you want to display in line next to the particular record in a list. So these wrapper classes, as I mentioned, are completely written in Apex, and some links are provided uh, in the notes about how you can implement them properly, because there's lots of people who have differing views on that, and here's some and there's some good links below. So again, we can return to our MVC overview and complete it by adding this in there. And as we see, Salesforce provides a very flexible way of implementing MVC. But what we want to kind of note wherever possible is that we should use the standard controllers and the standard methods where possible before adding functionality via Apex. So a good example of this is using validation rules or using the built-in save methods from the standard controllers as this makes our code a little bit cleaner and also reuses the most functionality where possible. So I'd like to take a few minutes uh, just to kind of end by talking about separation of concerns and queries. So when implementing the MVC pattern, it's very important to remember where to place code. So the view is only used for data presentation and capturing user input. The controller should only be used for handling user input, updating the model, and then telling the view how to update accordingly. And similarly, the model should only encapsulate the data structure and its behavior. Often people forget these principles when writing their code, and it leads to heavy controllers which are actually performing some of the model's responsibilities, and we can think about this when we're thinking about queries. When using custom controllers, you have to write your own query to retrieve the data. So we saw in some of the other frameworks, like in uh, Play or Rails, that we have utility models uh, utility methods sorry, on the model that allow us to retrieve certain records or certain sets of records. We don't have this functionality on our S object models in Salesforce, and if we want to write a custom controller, we can't even use the, uh, the default records that have been passed through using the standard controllers, so we have to write a query. Wherever possible, you should try and move your queries into a helper class, and so you have a single class which is responsible for handling and managing all the queries, so should you add extra, I don't know, fields onto there, should you want to change or reuse the methods, you can do so in a single place, so there's a single point of responsibility, and it makes your code a lot cleaner going forward and means you don't have queries in the controller itself. It's also worth noting that for extensions to standard controllers, we can use dynamic visual force blindings and the add fields method in our constructor to add additional fields including related object fields. Again, I've linked to the documentation for this in the post notes below, and it's very worthwhile reading to try and reduce again the amount of queries and improve the amount of times or increase the amount of times you can use the standard set controller and standard controllers. So that was an, MV, uh, an overview of the MVC pattern on Salesforce. If you have any feedback, please either comment below or tweet at force.comcast. And you should also follow at force.comcast if you want to hear about new videos as they arrive.